Collision detection is a topic that can be very confusing, and a lot of people end up asking for help with it. I'm going to reiterate what I talked about in Episode 1 of Beginner's Guide about Bounding Boss Collision Detection. I might make a separate tutorial on the theory behind different methods of collision detection one day, but for now I'm just going to cover this basic method. Generic bounding box collision detection consists of having a rectangular region around your objects that specify where they are solid. Of course, this isn't super accurate as game characters aren't usually boxes themselves, but since you're just dealing with four corners, it makes this one of the easiest ways to check for Since the sprite images are rectangular, you could have the region just take up the entire sprite image, but usually you'll have a lot of blank space that you don't want to be counted as part of the character. Usually you can find some happy medium where you're covering most of the object's body, but also have some things that don't count as solid, such as your character's hair or their arms. I would suggest using rectangle objects to store your object's location as well as their collision regions, rather than storing and passing separate variables for an object's xy coordinates and the width and height dimensions. There should be one rectangle for the character's coordinates and dimensions, as well as a separate rectangle for the collision region. For the collision region rectangle, the xy coordinates are based on the image and not where the player is in the game. So if your sprite is 32 by 32 pixels, the region's xy coordinates would be somewhere between 0 and 32, while the object's position coordinates would be anywhere from 0 to the width or height of the screen. In your character object class, you'll want to have a function to return the object's collision region with respect to where the object currently is on the screen. If you just return the collision region itself, you'd get the incorrect values, as the collision region's coordinates are based on the image itself and not where the character is on the screen at that point. You can easily return the adjusted collision region by adding the player's x and y coordinates to the collision region's coordinates. This way, when you call your isCollision function, you can pass two rectangles, one for object A and one for object B. Here is an example of how your isCollision function would look. You'll have four tests in your if statement covering each side of both rectangles. Basically, if rectangle A's left side is less than B's right side, then it's possible that there might be a collision. After all, if A's left side is greater than B's right side, there's no way they would be touching. Similarly, if A's right side is greater than B's left side, then there also could be a collision. And then if A's top is less than B's bottom, and A's bottom is greater than B's top, then there also could be a collision. If all of these conditions are true, then your two rectangles are colliding. If you're still having trouble understanding this method of collision, Grab a sheet of paper and try to sketch each separate condition. That's all for this video. Next time I will be talking a bit about your game's levels, items, enemies, and weapons. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoy these videos, please consider donating a dollar.